Hi, welcome to another Satchel class today. My name is Mr. Castrillon, and I'm going to be talking to you about family. I hope you're all well and safe, and you're keeping yourselves healthy with your families. Uh, today, we are going to be talking uh, about this very, these three very important topics or kind of goals or targets. First, we are going to revise some words or vocabulary related to family members. We are going to use active adjectives to describe people. And we are going to learn and practice se llama, se llaman, to give names. So these are three very important things when we're talking about family. I'm going to read this in Spanish so you can get a little bit of uh, uh, kind of familiar with my accent. Hoy vamos a repasar el vocabulario relacionado con la familia emplear adjetivos descriptivos y hoy vamos a aprender y practicar is are called para dar nombres. Right, so let's start our lesson today. So I'm sure you're familiar with these characters here. I've got uh, the Simpsons, uh, very famous in my country as well. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to introduce or I'm going to give you the words in Spanish for each of those characters. However, I'm going to do this in Spanish so you know uh, what it sounds like uh, or what every single word sounds like in Spanish. So I'm going to start talking in Spanish right now. La familia de Lisa. Lisa. Lisa tiene un padre. Eh, se llama Homero. Eh, Lisa tiene una madre. Se llama Marge. Lisa tiene un hermano, se llama Bart. Lisa tiene una hermana, se llama Maggie. Lisa tiene un tío, se llama Herb. Y Lisa tiene dos tías, que se llaman Patty y Selma. Lisa tiene una primita, que se llama Lynn. Y Lisa tiene dos abuelos, Abraham y Clancy. Y Lisa tiene dos abuelas, Mona y Jackie. That is the Simpsons family. So I'm going to go over each one of these words so you get familiar with the pronunciation of those words. So we have, of course, uh, Lisa's mom and dad. So we've got madre, padre. Then we have, of course, brother and sister. We have hermano, hermana. And I want you to keep an eye on that ending because that ending is going to be very important when it comes down to family members, as you'll see later on. Then Lisa has three, um, two aunties and one uncle, Tio, Herb, y dos tías, Patty and Selma. Now, I want you to have a look again at the ending. We have an ending in O and an ending in A. And I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of masculine feminine in Spanish. And if you are not, just it's very simple. In Spanish, we tend to put words into uh, gender, either it's masculine or feminine. If the word ends in O, it usually is masculine. And if the word ends in A, it means that the word is feminine. Then we have the word for grandparents. We have grandfather, grandmother. So we have abuelo. Abuela. And really important, once again, as you can see, we have the ending O, A, O for masculine, A for feminine. So I hope you're familiar with this. I'm going to repeat each one of those words and then we're going to do a little bit of practice. Abuelo, abuela, abuelo, abuela, tío, padre, madre, tía, tía, hermano, Hermana, prima. I had forgotten about this one, actually. I'm so sorry about that. Now, Ling is uh, Lisa's cousin. In Spanish, we have the word primo. It's very similar to prime. So it's, a, it's an easy word to remember. Prime, prima. If it is a boy cousin, then you would say primo with an O at the end. Why? Because it's a male cousin. So let's see where you can remember some of these words. So I'm just going to show you a picture of each one of those characters, and then try to remember how to say the word for that family member in Spanish. So here we go. Abraham, 
grandfather. Can you remember how to say grandfather? I'm going to give you five seconds to try and remember. Five, four, three, two, one. Abuelo. Okay, abuelo. Oh, Mona. Can you remember how to say grandma? Grandmother in Spanish? I'm going to count five seconds. In Spanish this time. Cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, uno. Abuela. Yes. Easy one. Again. Abuelo. Well done. Can you remember grandmother? This is an easy one. Abuela. If you can remember the basic start of these words, then it's going to be very easy to remember. Abuelo, abuela. What about the next one? Herb, uncle. How do you say uncle in Spanish? ¿Cómo se dice uncle en español? Cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, uno. Tío. Muy bien. Father. Padre. Although in Spanish we can also say papá. And you know what? When I speak to my dad in Spanish, I say this. Viejo. I literally say my old man. It sounds very beautiful in Spanish. Well, where I come from, by the way. Then we have mother. Madre. Mamá. Mommy, you can use that one if you want to, when you're writing about your family or when you're speaking about your family. What about aunties? Tías, muy bien, tías. Now, we have these two very important characters in Lisa's life. So we have hermana, hermano. Now, in Spanish, we do something really beautiful. is We try and make things sound, I would say, better or more um, it has a lot of kind of uh, an emotional charge I mean, we like being emotional in Spanish we like sharing our feelings so if you want to make it sound even better than that you can say hermanita or hermanito so it literally means my little sister my little brother and then we have prima now, can you guess how to say my little cousin? Primita, yes. Always practice this. This is really good. And actually it's going to give you lots of points because it shows that you know how to do it in Spanish. Now then, let's say I want to speak about my family and my family's, uh, my relatives' names. So let's say my dad, mi papá se llama Luis. So we have the word se llama, this phrase, se llama, it means is called. My father's name is Luis. Mi papá se llama Luis. So whenever you want to give any of your relatives names in Spanish, all you need to say is se llama. Por ejemplo, ¿cómo se llama tu padre? I could ask, ¿cómo se llama tu papá? And it's a very good sentence or question in Spanish. So my family, for instance, mi familia, is as follows. Mi papá se llama Luis. Mi mami se llama Mariela. Mi hermano menor se llama Manolo. Mi hermano mayor se llama Lucho. Can you guess what menor and mayor mean? Hey, you can check your dictionary and see because what they mean. They are really important actually and you can use, it, use them when you're talking in Spanish. Mis primas se llaman Claudia y Nidia. Now, as you can see, I'm using a plural. And because it's plural, I need to say se llaman with an N at the end. Mis primas se llaman Claudia y Nidia. Now, let's talk about personality, la personalidad, because every single one of our relatives will be, you know, interesting in some way. So let's have a look and see how many options of personalities we have. Look at that. We have so many. We can say simpático, independiente, aventurero, sensible, Reservado, amistoso, generoso, cuidadoso, activo, optimista, divertido, amable, 
práctico, pesimista, inteligente, despistado, audaz, alegre. Quite a few things, you know, that we have to say about all these words is first, some of them will be very transparent and easy to remember. For instance, independiente, it sounds very similar to independent. So that's a good one to remember because it's a long word and it's an easy one to remember and pronounce. The same with optimista or inteligente. You also have other words that will be a little bit more difficult, but they do give you a lot of points. Uh, if you are going to use them. For instance, audaz, o simpático, o despistado. That's a very good one. Now, I'm not going to give you the translation for all of these words, but what I would like you to do, and I encourage you to do it, is take your phone, take a picture of the screen, come back to the video if you want to uh, another day, and then try and search what those words mean. They are really important. Also, remember that these words, if they end in O, well, they are used with a male relative. But if you're talking about a female relative, say, for instance, your auntie or your sister, then these words ending in O will have to become words ending in A. For instance, mi prima Claudia es simpática. Why? Because it's feminine. Now, the ones that end in E, independiente, inteligente, amable, well, you don't have to do anything. They stay the same, masculine or feminine. Audaz is another one. Alegre, no problem whatsoever. They stay the same. Now, if you're talking about a group of people, then in that case, you have to add an S at the end. For instance, mis hermanos son simpáticos, with an S at the end. Why? Because it's plural. We're talking about many people. Now, let's see what I can say about my family. Mi papá se llama Luis y es muy divertido. Mi mami se llama Mariela y es muy inteligente. Mi hermano menor se llama Manolo y es muy reservado. Mi hermano mayor se llama Lucho y es muy trabajador. Mis primas se llaman Claudia y Nidia y son muy lindas y amistosas. So, before I continue, I want to emphasize a couple of things. First, as you can see, I'm using the word E, which means and. So that's a very good way to link or connect sentences. But also, I'm using the word muy. Muy means literally very. So what I'm saying is my father's name is Luis and he's very funny. Now, really important is that when you use these words, you are actually making your sentence or your paragraph sound better. It looks better because it has more words. Now then, you can improve my own sentences, by the way. So feel free to take notes of these sentences and make them even better than what they already are. Also, as you can see, I've included some words that were not in the previous slide. And that means that there are many words, many more words that we can use to describe our relatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to write the name of your parents and of your siblings uh, on a piece of paper on your phone, on your laptop. And there is a mini challenge for that. How would you say only child? And that's for those of you who don't have any siblings. Now, if you want to be a bit more adventurous and you want to be uh, take a bit of a high risk, well, why don't you write the name of your parents, your siblings, and your grandparents? And your mini challenge is to use a diminutive ending to show more affection. So for instance, instead of saying prima, you could say perimita, and that makes it even better. Or if you want to actually take a huge risk, well, you can write a paragraph giving, giving your relatives names and describe their personality. And the mini challenge is to include their ages and their occupation, which I didn't do in any of my descriptions, but you can easily do if you stretch yourself a little bit. Don't you feel scared of doing that? Always try a new way to challenge yourself. Why? Because the more you challenge yourself, the more you're going to learn. And don't worry about the mistakes. You know what? I learned English by myself. And, you know, I made many mistakes when I was learning. And they paid off because at the end of the day, I'm now learning and I'm speaking in a beautiful language. So once again, take a challenge and give it a go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my timer here and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to try and get some of these um, challenges or tasks done today. 
So a couple of minutes for you to try and do some of these sentences. And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And don't forget that you can actually come back to these lessons and see the video again, so you can practice even more. Okay, I hope you have quite a few sentences already set, written uh, on your uh, notebook or your computer. Once again, always challenge yourself, always try to do a bit more because at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want to learn a lot more of Spanish. Now, by now you should be able to write sentences by using se llama. Remember that se llama means it's called or their name is. You should be able to remember words about family members. So I'm going to pronounce them in Spanish and see whether you can remember them. Madre, prima, abuelo, abuela, tía, hermana, primo, prima. If you can actually understand these sentences or these words, you definitely know what they are and you can actually use them yourself now always try to stretch yourself thinking what is the spelling of those words because remember the spelling in spanish is slightly different to the spelling in english and it's good to try and do that you should be able to use adjectives to describe the personality of your relatives so remember that you have inteligente interesante amistoso or you can have Trabajador, which I didn't put in the list, but it's also a really, really common one that you can use all the time. Finally, before I finish, there are a couple of things about family members. We have, of course, many families uh, that of, we uh, use uh, words in Spanish to define. I'm just trying to get my draw. Uh, some words that we definitely use in Spanish, such as padrastro. We also have, for instance, hijastro, hermanastro. And these words are actually new words that uh, they belong to, to the curriculum and we want to use them sometimes. Uh, and although you may not have a stepdad, but you may know someone who has a stepdad. So it's really important to use these words. Why? Because it shows that you know the language. It shows that you have practiced your Spanish and that you're actually thinking outside the box, that you're actually leaving your comfort zone. The more you use these words, these weird words that we, we have in Spanish, the better it is, for, is, it is for you and for your results. Finally, before we leave and we finish today, when we're talking about family members in Spanish, we tend to use, for instance, papa, mama, uh, hermanito, hermanita. So always use words that will make you feel comfortable when you're talking in Spanish. You don't want to make it sound too, I would say, kind of uh, uh, rehearsed, if you like. Okay, so that will be everything for today. I'm just going to clear my screen here. And that's the end of our life, of a slide today. Before I go, remember that the more you practice, the better. Use a dictionary all the time and always question yourself. Think, how can I say this? How can I say that? What's the best, of, the best way of saying this? Or what is the best way of saying that? And always include more words in your descriptions. For example, I'm going to do one here. Mi papá se llama Luis, es muy inteligente, tiene 60 años, es alto, de pelo rubio. 
As you can see, I'm giving more and more descriptions, but we will do that in another lesson. In the meantime, keep yourself safe, have a good rest of week or weekend, and I hope I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.